Good morning, welcome back. We are going to get started on part two of our front yard Halloween display and the neighborhood dogs have decided that it's the time to bark right now. So if you hear them, I don't know what's going on, but I feel like every time I bring my camera out, there's so much traffic and so many dog barks. So I'm really sorry about that. And the wind, that usually starts around the time I pull the camera out as well. But just in case you missed it, this is what we worked on in part one, setting up our giant spider, our front door, front step area, and our little creepy cemetery. I'm not sure how well you can see him right there, but Derek is sitting there working on protecting the switches for the lights that we installed in this part of the display. We got some new ground lights and string lights and house lights in general that really enhance our display but we want to make sure that we keep them in working order so even though they're outdoor safe and waterproof we just want to make extra sure that we're securing them so he's been making those little tweaks all morning but as soon as he's finished we're going to start working on the rest of the yard for years our display has felt like it's been very tight to the house and we will still be extending that cemetery look through this front flower bed we're hoping to have enough to be able to get it all the way like to the edges so that this entire flower bed portion seems like a cemetery i'm just laughing right now i cannot make this stuff up our neighbor i have tried to film this clip like three times and our neighbor next door is like shouting on his phone right now do you hear him? I don't know if you can hear him or not, but I can certainly hear him. And he never speaks. I've never heard this man speak. He waves all the time, but I've never heard him open his mouth and make a sound until I need to film something and now he's shouting on the phone. <laughs> but anyway, basically all that I'm saying is that we've added quite a bit to our collection over the last couple of years. And so instead of having the display so tight to the house, we are going to be able to extend it quite a bit into our front yard space this year. And we are really excited to get started on that. We think that we're going to kind of center it around this tree here and the empty space in between and make way better use of our large front yard to have a more involved kind Kind of grand over the top display instead of having everything concentrated so tight to the house. So the first thing that I decided to do was completely ignore my fear of heights and start working on telling the story of this cemetery display. We've had this kind of creepy haunted cemetery vibe for a few years and we've collected pieces and built up our display collection based on this theming. And so we did get a few posable skeletons this year. We got three five foot posable skeletons and then also some more spiders Spiders, not just that one giant spider that we have and so I kind of had this concept of the skeletons trying to get away from the spiders or being attacked by the spiders and so I found this light up spider and web at Target I actually was in store filming a shop with me video to show all of the new Target Halloween decor from the hide and eat collection and I stumbled across this and I was so excited looking at it online the product shots were not too creative but seeing it in person I just knew I had to try something with it so the spider itself self lights up and then the web is actually string lights and what I wanted to do was have that posable skeleton in the crook of the tree and then have the spider hanging down and use the string lights to weave a web with the available branches that I could reach to look like a natural spider web and kind of weave it through the tree and the skeleton as if it had been trying to get away from the giant's spiders down on the ground and then ended up falling right into this spider here in the tree. So I know it's a little bit difficult to see because it's so bright outside and I'm just working with these little string lights, but it ends up being really, really cool. And at the end of the video, I am going to share what the entire display looks like when we're finished. And then of course, when it gets dark and it's all lit up and this turned out exactly how I was imagining it. I was kind of giving myself a pat on the back for coming up with this concept and I love this spider. It was so affordable, very versatile, and it worked perfectly. So if you're looking for something like this, I'll leave it linked in the description box. Totally worth the like $25 that I paid for it.
Okay, so this is either gonna look really cool or really stupid, but I put this skeleton up in the tree like he was sitting here either hanging out or trying to get away from something and the spider caught him in their web or like w wove a web around him. So we're gonna plug it in and see if it looks cool or if it looks dumb and we need to keep take it down. It's blinking a lot. Have it to the purple ones. What do you think? I know it's hard to see in the daylight. What do you think it's gonna look like? You do? I think we decided we like it. So what we decided to do is stake down the wire so that it really stays in place and it's taut and that way this doesn't like blow around in weather or anything. And then also we can kind of manipulate this to be over here so we don't have to have a bunch of extension cords and we can plug it in. Derek's got a timer over here and that's what we have all of our lights hooked up to. We do the same thing for Christmas. You are about to see me nearly kill my husband. I felt so bad for this, but I wasn't paying attention, went to step on the ladder to show him something and it wasn't actually stable and nearly knocked him off. Thank goodness that he was right next to that branch and could hold on to it to stabilize himself because that could have ended so badly. So here's your little reminder to make sure that you are using appropriately sized ladders, securing them and double checking before you are working on anything like this because we don't want any accidents but anyway while we are working through setting up this second giant web and spider and the scene with the skeletons that we had been discussing i wanted to take a minute to address some common comments that i see whenever i post videos with derek my husband I see quite a few of you comparing your relationships to your perception of my relationships and I know that perception is based on what I'm showing on camera in my videos, but a lot of you seem to think that we always work in perfect synchronicity and so then I'll see that you're a little upset with your husband or partner thinking that you guys could never do something like this because you wouldn't get along or it wouldn't be enjoyable, that it's easier to just let him do it and you can't really participate or vice versa, that you feel like you need to do it all yourself and not even ask for your partner's input because it would just end an argument. And I wanted to say that while I absolutely am blessed that Derek and I have a lot of common interests and that we work well together 80% of the time, we don't work in perfect synchronicity all the time. And these clips are a perfect example of that. You're going to see a lot of jump cuts and you have been seeing a lot of jump cuts, which means that there's just a lot of footage that was taken out of here. A lot of standing around, doing different options. And that's because Derek and I were bickering this entire time of how to approach this portion of the display. Mostly because we conceptualize things very differently. Now I am not a visual person, like I can't close my eyes and see a picture, but I think the best way to describe myself is that I'm more intuitive, like I can just see something or come up with an idea and know how it's going to work or how it wouldn't work. Whereas Derek is a very visual person and not that he's visualizing in his head, but he needs to see the actual visual in real life. So that's why you're seeing me doing a lot of poses that are clearly not working and trying things in different ways is because the ideas that we had been coming up with, he needed to physically see that they would not work before he could move on to thinking up a different idea. And what we ended up settling on is that we would make it look like the skeleton was being attacked by the spider and trying to get away and posing him on the ground like this and eventually posing it out and showing him Derek agreed he liked it it worked and we ended up staking it down but there was a lot of bickering frustrated tones and annoyance with each other in the process and I'm just here to say that 
that happens, it's totally normal. And if that is happening with you and your partner, don't let it prevent you from at least trying because at the end of the day, this was such a good bonding experience for the two of us. Overall, we had so much fun. We're really proud of the finished product and that little bit of bickering or disagreements happens. It's natural and you just gotta move on from it and not let it eclipse the entire experience. Okay, what do you guys think of this? We kind of inverted the spider web and so we have this spider underneath of it and we did put some of those Govi string lights in this web as well so that will sync up with both the sound effects and the lights in the rest of the display but then we positioned this poseable skeleton to look like he got caught and was trying to get away clearly he was unsuccessful because you know he is a skeleton now and then we have these giant eight or nine foot skeletons so Derek's gonna start putting one right here. It doesn't come in too many pieces, so it is relatively easy to put together. It's just got these wire connectors here. Do you need some help or you got it? And then it has those wires in it because it's actually an animatronic, so the lights light up and it makes noise. Obviously you attach the other limbs right here. It's not completely poseable, like we can't move the legs around because they are fixed onto the base right here. But even though they aren't completely poseable, we still really like them a lot. They work to kind of fill large, open, or empty spaces within our display, and we like that they are animatronic. So they have lights and make sounds and they add to that as aspect of our display and they're pretty affordable as far as like giant yard decorations go the equivalent at like a Lowe's or Home Depot can be like 350 plus dollars but these were $1.99 and we do have two of them I've seen them restock a couple of times online this year so if they are currently available I'll link them down below for you if, in case you want to grab one to add into your display but Derek's just going to get that assembled and then we do have another five foot I think it's five foot poseable skeleton. He's right here. I still have to cut his zip ties so that he can come apart, but it's the same one as this one and the one we have in the tree. And I was thinking that we might put him right here, like trying to grab onto the shoulders of this one to look like it's trying to help save it from the spider. But then I don't want to have like so much of the scene right here and kind of nothing over here. So I'm kind of caught in between for what we should do. Clearly that initial idea of having it look like the skeleton was trying to help his friend did not work out. And I think it's because these posable skeletons are kind of hyper mobile. They don't just move up and down like their joints moving back and forth, but they also rotate. They're very flexible. And we like that about them because we can easily position them without breaking them. But also in some certain positions, they just kind of collapse onto themselves because of that. So it didn't work out to have it look like he was helping his friend. And instead we settled on making it look like he was running away from the spider. So once we had decided what position he was going to be in, we just used the tiki torch pole I don't know what this is it's part of the tiki torches we have in our backyard staked it into the ground and then zip tied the skeleton to it and then when it's dark outside you can't even see that pole because it's black and you're gonna see me run off camera here in just a second and that's because our youngest daughter Sawyer started riding her bike with no training wheels while we were setting up the display that's why you can see Derek like smiling and talking and laughing and I ran away to go high-five Sawyer and celebrate with her and congratulate her it was 
so cool. One of her training wheels broke while we were working on things and so Derek just took the training wheels off and we kind of gave her the option that she could either attempt to ride her bike with no training wheels or she was just going to have to stop riding the bike because we were doing this and she decided to try and literally 10 seconds later she was like I'm doing it and she was riding with no training wheels and now she's been riding outside every single day since she's spending so much time on her bike and she's clearly so proud of herself and we are so proud of her as well so I wanted to make sure that I mentioned it in this video so you can leave a congratulations for Sawyer a high five emoji or any words of encouragement or praise for her efforts down in the comments and I will make sure to read to her and let her see all of those comments encouraging her and congratulating her for this huge milestone. I can't believe she's riding with no training wheels. We found this skeleton arm and lantern at, I think it was Lowe's last year, and I'm pretty sure we had to buy the display model of it. I got a lot of questions about it, and I don't think I was ever able to find the link online. I haven't seen it back in stores this year, so I'm not sure if it returned. If I can find the link for it, I'll leave it in the shopping tab and down in the description box for you, but we love this thing. It's a relatively large piece of outdoor safe decor it works really well in our display and it was pretty affordable for being the size and material that it is I think it was like 60 or 70 dollars but one thing about it is that because we had to buy the display the lantern was damaged when they were setting it up and we were never able to get it to work so we've overcome that by using a small strand of the govi string lights we did the same thing last year and we're doing it again this year and we just feed the govi lights into the lantern and then Derek's going to secure the string of that to the skeleton arm so that it's not seen and these connect with the rest of the lights because all of our outdoor lights in the display are govi lights so it connects with the rest of the lights the same kind of halloween overlay options that they have and it can be controlled from the app it makes it really easy to turn this on and instead of having to fill it with batteries and come push the on off switch twice a night to turn it on and turn it off it just works out so much better and then like I said he is securing the power string to the skeleton arm with zip ties so that it's not just hanging and blowing around and can't be seen and I just have to compliment him and his attention to these details because they really do make such a difference in our final display and go a long way with making it look good not just at night when the lights are turned on but also during the daytime when you would be able to see all of those unfinished things in the bright daylight. Thank you. 
So we have a second one of these lit spiders with the string light web. And so since we have this kind of awkward space in between the hedge and this little tree shrub thing, we decided to put our second giant skeleton and then we just have that web coming out across here and we thought that would fill the space nicely and it kind of works with the rest of it as soon as we got it done Derek was like man I wish that we had another one to kind of weave over that one but maybe if we ever find another one we'll pick it up they weren't too expensive but it does seem to work really well with what we've got going on with the rest of it and now that we feel like we've figured out the placement of all of the big things and kind of told a story through our decor. We have like a cohesive kind of display. Derek's working on staking down all of these big things. So the skeleton there and then he'll do the skeleton over here and he's zip tying the spider into the bush and we did already stake down the string lights there but we just want to make sure everything is super secure that so that it doesn't get blown around in the weather or damaged at all and then I think that's going to wrap up everything we're going to do for today at least we got all of these major things there are a few finishing details that we have to do like we still need to address all of the windows in the front of the house and um, just do some like fine tuning with the lighting that we have going on. I think I wanna order some colored pathway lights because the warm white ones, when they light up, it just isn't cohesive with the rest of the lighting that we have going on in the display. And Derek is going to set up some more spotlights and things like that, but the sun is going down. It's getting past dinner time at this point. So I think we're gonna go ahead and call this a day. He's just going to stake everything down, make sure it's secure, and then hook up all of the lighting that we currently have out here. So as soon as he's done with that, I'll show you what the display looks like lit up at night. But I hope that you all enjoy this part two and how we've extended our Halloween display through the front yard this year it just it looks so cool we're really excited about it and I feel like it tells like a bigger better story than in years past so if you did enjoy today's video don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you aren't already because we will be going inside to decorate this week and I'm really excited to share all of those interior decorating ideas with you but thanks so much for choosing to spend your time here with me and hopefully I see you all in the next one bye <laughs> <laughs>